been such a joy having you out here with Auntie T and I. Uh, but I want you just to maybe share with everybody for just a couple minutes, bring people up to speed on a little bit of what's gone well, but what have been the challenges of the last few years and where you're at now, then we'll talk about those. So like he said, I'm 15. I'm from Portland, Oregon. Um, growing up, I was never dealt the perfect set of cards. Um, I grew up with divorced parents at five years old. My mom was an addict. My dad struggled with anger. Um, I blamed a lot of my situations and choices on their past. And so when I would get angry or when I would blow up, it's my dad's fault because he blew up at me when I was younger. Same with my mom. And so whenever there was something going on at school, it was always my family home life problem. Growing up, that led into a lot of anxiety, depression, suicide, more anger. Um, I struggled with pornography addictions, going to boys for attention. Um, my dad was bounced between other marriages throughout the years, and I always came back to blame my parents. Um, I had to come to a conclusion about a year, almost a, a little over a year ago, of I got to stop blaming my parents for my choices. I'm 15, and I still am not an adult. I still can't make my own decisions yet, but I have to choose where I want to go in life, even if I am 15. And I got to stop blaming my parents for where I'm at, what I'm doing, and my choices, and take personal responsibility for where I've come. And I still struggle a lot, but learning to balance that relationship and be me in all relationships, um, and not pleasing people, but be me so that I can go where I want to go in life and not have to, in 30 years, blame my situation on my childhood. See, isn't that cool? So listen to this. What, what Madeline is doing is accepting the blessings of her father and her mother. Because your mom is a no-nonsense. She gets the job done, yes. right? Yeah. Like, Jen, don't play. No. She and says she's going to do something. She's going to do it. That's right. And it gets done with excellence. Mm -hmm. And then... Your dad, probably one of the greatest entrepreneurs I know, yeah. and a man of great structure. Yeah. And so you're adopting those, 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 the great things of your family. And the amazing things they've taught me. Yeah. That's right. But you're, you're, you know, at 15 years old, you, my friends, there are things, even us as parents right now, we're not doing everything perfect. And the sooner we wake up to those, how it's affecting and how it's empower, is it affecting or empowering our kids and saying, Madeline is changing her family tree. You see this? At 15 years old. So there's never an age that you have to wait. There's never an age to start too early to empower our kids to rise above and to start thinking for themselves. So talk to me a little bit about uh, the, well, I wrote it down because I wanted to ask you about it, but people pleasing versus people loving. Okay. So like I said, growing up, my dad had a lot of anger issues and that came with a lot of control. And so to get his attention, I would try to please him with everything I did. Um, so I would go out of my way to do things that weren't me, to say the perfect thing, to not make, not say something that Madeline would say, but say something to please him. And I've had to learn that along the way, I was like a chameleon. Like I was s different people with everybody I was with. Mm -hmm. And nobody knew me. I didn't even know me. Mm -hmm. And so learning how to have those relationships and love those people and respect those people without sacrificing yourself because you, yes. you can't be different people in every relationship and still know yourself. Oh, did you guys just catch that? Words of pure wisdom. I'm not even going to ask for a show of hands, but I used to have, T and I used to have three friendships. We'd have our church friends, mm -hmm. our work friends, and our high school friends. Mm -hmm. Some of you is exactly what I'm talking about. See, I'm always in the room. I will say the same thing is why sometimes I say what you might think. I can't believe he said that from stage because if I can't say it from stage, I shouldn't be saying it to you in private. I am who I am. I'm unapologetic for that. Just follow my Instagram story. <laughs> okay. I'm a little more unplugged on there. Well, I'm the same person here. Same thing with the podcast. I've decided when you step over a line of no, I'm not going to please everybody else. And I am, I've got to do this for me. There's so much freedom on the other side because, Madeline, you've experienced so much freedom, especially the last six months. Um, so my question then, my next, or my last question would be, how do you love and show honor to someone without sacrificing yourself? And I know you talked about it a little bit, but go into a little bit deeper. How do you love and honor, but you're not sacrificing who Madeline is and who she's becoming? I would say you're going to have to start with getting yourself in order and finding yourself. 
because it's really hard to balance other relationships in front of yourself. So this past year, I took a year away. I went to boarding school. I left my parents, I left my siblings, I left you guys, I left everybody to go be with people and better myself. While I was there, I wasn't worried about what was going on around me. I was physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally working on myself so that I can come back and integrate and be me in every relationship and learn how to love, say yes to my parents, but not sacrifice myself for them. Mm. And in all the relationships, not just my parents. Any closing words? Just be you. Like, learn who you are and be you and be that same person in every relationship. 